cannot control that which you did not create. And this is part of why up here today I'm limited as to what information I can share with you and what questions I can answer. We may look at a slave plantation and for those of you who are like me, you look at the slave plantation and you think this is horrible. It's ugly. It is rotten. And if you ever watched the movie Amistad, there's actually a classic scene in which these two congressmen are in court and one is arguing how horrible slavery is and that it should be made illegal. And he goes on for a great length of time and he brings in witnesses and they show them these horrible marks and beatings and how terrible it is and he puts this really great picture of how bad slavery is. And the only rebuttal from this other congressman is, well, yeah, it's bad, but nobody objected. The Amistad case goes on to create an interesting argument. And what happened in the case, of course, is that a group of slaves revolt on a slave ship, take control of the ship by killing off most of the crew. But because they don't know how to navigate, they actually end up off the coast of the United States and are recaptured by an American warship. They end up in custody and they end up in court and everyone under the sun is claiming an interest. The Queen of Spain wants her interest. The shipping company that owned the boat, they want their interest. Everybody wants an interest and meanwhile, the crew members, or the, not the crew members, but the slaves that have survived are now being charged with murder. So ex-president John Adams comes in and he argues very eloquently that there's only one of two possibilities here. The first possibility is that they're slaves, they're property, in which case property cannot damage property. All you have is a tort claim. Property cannot commit murder. If property cannot commit murder, then all you have is a simple tort claim. There's a damage. How much did you lose? How much did the party that owned the crew and owned the vessel actually lose? Because if they're slaves and if they're property, then the owners of this property have to reimburse them. Like if a horse comes over and kicks down the door of your house and ruins the furniture in your house, you go to the horse's owner and you tell him this is the amount of the damage. The owner of the horse has to pay. Or the other possibility is that they're not slaves. Now, if they're not slaves, then they have a right to revolt. They have a right to kill their captors, which is what they did. So this case had to be argued all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States. The lower courts kept ruling that they're just property, they have to be returned, they could be charged with murder. They kept ruling without looking at the major issues. It had to go all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States. And at the risk of the United States of America as this newly formed little corporation being completely destroyed by civil war, the Supreme Court of the United States ruled that these were not slaves and they had a right to revolt. The reason that they were not slaves is they never voluntarily agreed to become slaves. And if you look at the history of Africans being sold into slavery at the time, they actually had to be processed through a processing house before being shipped out of Africa in which it was required to get the mark or signature on a piece of paper. Well, these guys on this ship had not given their mark, had not given their signature. They had not volunteered. They had not agreed. Really cool case. The entire court case is actually included in the handout. And again, we have another look at slavery. And I, I keep saying this over and over again is because sometimes uh, people think I'm just being evasive if I choose not to answer certain questions or I choose to not to go in a certain direction about what we're talking about here. It's really tough because I look at slavery and I see that it's cruel and I see that it's harsh and I even see that it's heinous. And I want everyone to enjoy freedom. But it is not okay to go out on that plantation and tell the slaves on that plantation that you don't have to work today. 
or you don't have to pick cotton today or whatever else is going on in that plantation, it is not okay. So if I didn't create that slave plantation and I didn't create slavery, it is not up to me, it is not okay for me to try to control it. This, of course, is a very famous picture. This is Tiananmen Square, and I apologize for the poor quality, but this is really the only version of it I could find. The reason this is famous is because, first of all, we have an example of the power of one. Here's one man, probably carrying his entire worldly possession in his grocery bag in his left hand, and he stopped a parade of power and might and force, four armored tanks in China, stopped dead in their tracks by one unarmed man. A friend of mine recently pointed out something that no matter how many times I looked at this particular image, I had missed. The man's actually in a crosswalk. <laughs> so is he really demonstrating the power of one? Is he really standing up against tyranny? Is he really interfering with commerce? Or was he just blindly on his way home following the same crosswalk that he follows every day of his life? Well, we don't really know, and uh, every source that I've gone to, we're not able to determine this man's name, and we don't know if he survived this little event. But what he did wasn't entirely appropriate. Even though we can applaud him, even though we can say it's a fantastic demonstration of the power of one, the only way to stand up against slavery is demonstrated by Mahatma Gandhi. And it's referenced in the... Um, in the laws uh, that, that preceded that. Um, the, your only solution, your only remedy is what's called peaceful protest. And what that means is that if they're pointing the guns at you and they tell you you have to comply and you have to be a good slave and you have to register and you have to give up title and you have to do all of these things, it's okay to just sit down and take no action at all. It's not okay to fight them, it's not okay to meet violence with violence, it's not okay to destroy, try and destroy evil with evil, but it is okay to simply sit down and do nothing. Those who end up enjoying this view have in some way tried to control something that they did not create. Try to imagine every crime under the sun that someone's been charged with and in prison for. In some way, shape, or form, they were trying to control something which they did not create. If we follow these rules of commerce, we can avoid this view, we can avoid these consequences. Birth certificate. This is going to get good, right? First of all, a birth is a place that you park a ship. So the first thing that we're looking at here is this has to do with admiralty. And by the way, uh, Benedict on admiralty is of course included in the handout, and it will describe what's going on in admiralty. We could go back, and we'll see it here just a little bit, to the first MSO in all of creation as we know it, and then from that MSO, what was created thereafter. And the first MSO is actually in Scripture, and it's Genesis 1.1. We're going to cover that in just a second. But from that, again, if you want to play in commerce, you have to create something. Now, if you can't create a planet, you can't create the heavens, so you can't create the heavens and the earth, and you're not creating any children, you could create possibly an idea or a concept, like maybe 10 rules of commerce, or you could just be rediscovering the 10 rules that are already there, depending on how you look at it. The alternative is to create something brand new called the waters of commerce. And you can spread these waters of commerce over the entire earth. And anything that voluntarily agrees to be under these waters of commerce is yours to control. So for instance, if a child comes into this world and the parent agrees to park it at a berth where you park a ship on these waters of commerce, and they go to the dock tour, whose job it is to manage these berths, manage these places where we park ships, and they get a birth certificate to show where this living being is now parked in these waters of commerce, it's a whole nother ball game and it's a whole nother way to engage in commerce. And this again is rule number two, you cannot control that which you did not create. Now, there's a lot of stories out there about, oh, you can cancel your birth certificate, or you can change your birth certificate, or you can redeem your birth certificate. If you didn't create it, you cannot control it no matter what. And here's the best part, that birth certificate doesn't have your signature. You're not party to the contract. So believe it or not, you don't have to worry about it. Once you turn 18, or just before that, around 16, for the age of majority, depending on which jurisdiction and where you live, 
those powers that are enjoying the benefit of this registered collateral will try to get you to volunteer into a new version of commerce because they know that although your parents gave up title because they were drunk or crazy or foolish or whatever reason they got tricked into it, they know that they have to get you to voluntarily agree as you approach that age of majority. And the way they do that is they get you to look into an eye machine. It's not so much the act that you looked into the eye machine, it's that they gave you a command and you obeyed it. So that is the first time that you obeyed a command from your new slave master. He said, look into the eye machine. Oh, certainly, this eye machine right here, okay. And they went from that contract with your parents, this birth certificate, which we're going to get into in more detail in a bit, to you voluntarily agreeing, and then right after that, a brand new signature from you, right? Sign on the dotted line. And what does it say? I agree to operate all motor vehicles under the motor vehicle code. More voluntary agreement, right? This is, of course, the back side of that birth certificate, still in rule number two. You cannot control that which you did not create. Now, those may be the imprints of your little baby feet or your little baby thumbprints or whatever they are, where they're trying to traverse that living being into this fictional paper world in admiralty jurisdiction on the waters of commerce. But if you didn't volunteer, it doesn't apply to you. And that's why they must get you to volunteer, look into the eye machine, and sign here. Gold chain around your neck, nothing to me. Diamonds in your teeth, nothing to me. You could be rolling 22s, nothing to me. You're listening down with the truth, now that's something to me. Know thyself, seek and ye shall find. I tell you this now, it's in no African mind. Searching diamonds, gold, silver, platinum, them the kind of things, illusions you fathom. Yeah, they call it magic. White, your rap is tragic. I know, clever what they done, fantastic. Come against me now, you end up in a straight jacket. I'll prove you illiterate. One question, the language. Now who's the pickle in the sandwich? This kind of knowledge that you're hearing will damage you, destroy you. Don't worry, I'll employ you, get you back on track, so you can defend your own attack. Gold chain round your neck, nothing to me. Diamonds in your teeth. Nothing to me. You could be rolling 22s. Nothing to me. Down with the truth. Now that's something to me. Gold chain round your neck. Nothing to me. Diamonds in your teeth. Nothing to me. You could be.